Okay, today's all about disassembly, so I'm going to get all of this garage out, um, the bulkhead, get this area pretty much all clear. Then we can look at the systems, I think adapt the bulkhead, and um, ultimately get that bed lowered down. How's that for some wiring? Does look like quite the mess, doesn't it? Um, so there was a third party that actually ended up working on this and they added this secondary um, solar MPPT controller while the customer was away in Europe. So a lot of these wires have been added by a third party. So um, that is definitely my excuse. And you see, we, we CNC'd a purpose, um, CNC a dedicated board and you know if you can imagine there was only one battery here and this was going to it was going to be in this position and you had really nice access yeah definitely not um the the, the neat wiring that we're definitely known for and that most of our builds um look like but it's an opportunity to 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 improve you know and you see you've got all this plumbing down through here that's all going to be replaced with 15 mil rigid as well so um yeah a chance to definitely make it better but it's obviously quite painful for me to for me to show you this too because um yeah it's it's definitely stuff that I would would usually um be terrified of showing um anyone but uh this is all about being authentic being real and um showing the rea the realities of things but uh, obviously once I've finished work on this it will be uh, a vast improvement um so yeah watch this space This is the current, you can see that's quite dark in here. Plumbing situation underneath the sink. So we've got a seagull marine filter and um, you've got the pump up in there and we've got plumbing that goes up to the filter tap and uh, the main tap and the external shower. So there's a bit of pipe work you can see running underneath there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one of these pipes and let the water out and then I'm gonna take all of this plumbing out. Um, I'm not gonna move the filter, the filter's gonna stay in place, but the pump's gonna come out um, and all the rest of it. We'll get it all on the bench and then we're gonna to have to think about what the implications are to replace the flexible pipe work with the uh, John Guest 15 mil. Uh, yeah. These barbed tees are an absolute bastard to try and get off. So I'm just gonna cut it in sections and then I'll take apart any of these bits that we can potentially reuse. There's one section. Lovely bit of stainless steel. As you can see, I've taken most of the hot and cold pipework out of the van, and all of this is going to be replaced with rigid plastic pipework. Um, obviously, it's still plastic, uh, but the idea is that it doesn't have the plasticizer added to it, and therefore should be um, minimizing that contamination. This has all been led by the customer, um, you know, and I am a 
willing participant in this, I guess, experiment. Um, you know, we, we've used John Guest 15 mil um, rigid PEC system um, before in the past. We used to fit it to our builds. Uh, we moved away from it because this is just um, a lot more versatile. Uh, so it's not a system that we're, we're um, not used to. And you can see that you know, a lot of these, you know, this is a John Guest isolator, a 50 mil white push fit isolator. Um, with an adapter, uh, with, uh, with a barb adapter, so we can use this hose pipe. Um, obviously, the downside of the John Guest system is that there's going to be a lot more uh, joints in the system. Uh, but what I want to do is um, basically redesign the system so that you know none of those joints are hidden; they're all visible. We'll pressure test it before um, you know we run any water through it. Um, but uh, yeah, interesting. Is this pipe work killing you? Um, is it harming your health? Uh, remains to be seen but um yeah it's all coming out relatively simply uh, i'm going to try and reuse as many of these or you know put back into stock as many of these sort of stainless fixings as possible and um i'm going to have, have to take a look at this this seagull filter too and see drain this down and see uh what sort of state the filter's in because it's been used for sort of three or four months now so Wow, yeah. So you can see the amount of crap. Don't know if you can see that, but the amount of sediment. There you go. Pretty scary, to be honest with you. That's just in the bottom of the filter housing. About cutting her gun and feels good. I like the sound it makes. Slice of the box cutter against this southern paper. Yeah. This, and let's cut a few more. I'm not paying attention to what I'm cutting. I really hope that my wife is not super into this. I'm really into the thick of adjusting these systems now. Um, happy with the uh, the plumbing that's gone in uh, so far. Pulled the main, main electrical panel forward, starting to um, make the position for or well, the new position for the batteries, MultiPlus has gone on its side and lower and uh, you can see it's an absolute mess at the moment but uh, it will start to come together. The satisfying part is just um, neating and everything up and uh, I've got the van spun around now so I've got some nice light in there so it doesn't look so dingy. See, we had holes cut for the surfaces to come up through, mainly pipe work, but some wiring. Um, but because I've moved this panel forward, these are going to be redundant. So I'm going to sit, I'm going to seal these up, and I've got to make a new hole for the um, the main tank filler. So I've drilled a sort of pilot hole just to double check the location. It's all clear, so then I'm going to use a hole saw just to cut through there, and um, I'm going to run the Hoover at the same time to catch as much dwarf as possible and then we'll have another hoover up afterwards. So 
handy little deburring tool so I'll get underneath take off the worst of the um, the burrs that left over from the drill and then sand it with the emery cloth and then get some primer on there so what I'll do now is sand down the edge and use some of this quick primer just so that keeps uh, rust at bay I've started to rejig the systems in this van and I've dry fitted the box in the garage uh, so I can measure up to fit an access panel here so that you can get to all of the Victron kit. Originally you would access it through the top here but I've moved the panel forward and changed, uh, I've swapped the location of the batteries and the, the main panel so I'm going to measure up and I'm going to cut an access panel in here. in the government that have kind of this, this privileged window across the board that you might find A lot of you might be thinking, why didn't you just do that in the start? And it's a fair question. Um, and my answer is that there's only going to be one battery um, in that area. And the orientation was going to be different, but you know, it just shows um, the purpose of prototyping as well. If we take this van as a prototype, and um, then it's an improvement. You know, it is, it is a improvement and uh, very lucky to have the opportunity to be able to, to do it. So yeah, it will, um, it will make all those systems a, a lot easier to access, you know, changing blade fuses, changing MIDI, mega fuses, all that type of thing, monitoring any parts of the Victron system. So um, I'm going to just sand, clean that hatch, dry fit some hinges, and then I'm going to put that to one side. Somewhere up here, I have... Latches, so hardware, two hinges, two latches, two plates. This needs some sounding. So that's all going to be taken back off and painted. I'm going to take a tiny little bit more of the top here as well. You can see I've got a mark just so that it's nice and square. The new 15 mil John Guest lines run at the back of this drawer and on the back of this drawer, and then now they're coming down into the area Ooh, beneath the sink. Um, this is going to be uh, cold back to the heater, and that's going to be hot um, 
from the heater. So I'm gonna run these lines. I'm gonna put elbows here. I'm gonna run them up the top here. And then I've got this, um, you can see this fitting here that has the multiple outlets and, um, and then the pump. And we're probably gonna move the pump over and um, kind of try and neaten this up as much as possible and, and, and make it sort of serviceable. That's a dry fit of the lowered bed and uh, all is well. So that's it, it is lower position. Bulkhead's been modified. It's uh, mating well. You can see we're gonna have to adjust the draw there slightly. Is the draw modified um, so I've had to bring the some of the structure down and um, I'm gonna have to adjust the front but I'm gonna leave it a dry fit um, yeah back of the van has opened up a lot and you should be able to sit up in bed now once the uh, once the mattress is on it's quite a thick mattress a hundred and probably 150 mil when you um, when you include the top up but yeah that's the bed in its stowed position happy with that Um, just the two. It's lightweight wise, is it? Yes. It's not <laughs> yeah, so that, I'll, I'll have to blank those off then, because um, those ones are, that one's not going to be used, the okay. end one's not going to be used, I'll just put a plug in there. And well, then I'll give you a plug before we go. Okay, cool. Sweet. Oh, I've got some then. I mean, so it's a, it's a, uh, it's a work of art. <laughs> it, it's more and more regular that people want things for vehicles. Um, the mainstay of what we do is marine, so sure. Um, yeah, vehicles are funny shapes. Yeah, yeah, if I can have, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. We start with it this side. This yeah, one. that one's, yeah. Yeah, the top one, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. If you have any queries or whatever, just give us a ring. Yeah, cool. Nice to meet you, Jay. All right. Cheers, dude. And you? I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Maybe we'll maybe do some more tanks. See yeah. how that one goes. Yeah.
Shout. I'll send a link to the old YouTube as well. <laughs> yes. No <laughs> okay, so I've got the stainless tank back in the workshop and thought I'd put it on weighing scales uh, for a comparison. Uh, so the plastic version, the plastic 90 litre tank, weighs with the brackets, with the stainless brackets, approximately 14 kilograms. This stainless tank with the brackets weighs 30 kilograms, so you can see it's, it's, it's double the weight. Um, I've just got to fit the sender, um, and then I'm going to get it back back up to the van. A um, little bit more 50 mil plumbing to do uh, underneath the van to, to plumb this in. But obviously, we've already tested the um, the plumbing, and um, uh, happy with how that's coming out. So yeah, this will go up underneath the van, and um, yeah, obviously weight is always a consideration. So there's a stainless tank in the same position as the original plastic one. This has all been replaced, it's all 15 mil running up. We've got the drain, we've got the Vetus 40 mil that runs up, it's all been insulated. The filler, waste coming down here over the exhaust. I've got two of these marine hatches. Uh, which are going to act as opening vents uh, to uh, increase the sort of passive ventilation in the bed area. So I'll show you where these are going to be going up on the roof. So we have this small space between the awning, the solar panel and the AC unit. So we're going to put one hatch here, one hatch there. What we do is I'm going to prep by cleaning the roof and then I'm going to put plastic all the way around so when we do cut we're not going to get any swarf going down into any of the gutters or seals. Now we have this cleaned area that's been completely masked off with plastic and what I will do is I will find my dimensions for the cutout and I'll measure from the inside between the cross members, I'll drill up from the inside for both, then I'll find the centres um, on the outside and I'll, I'll replicate the cutout and then we'll double check. I've drilled up the centers on the inside and now I've transferred using that as a center, uh, the actual cutout. Both hatches dry fitted and I've just marked for all of the screw holes so I take them back out clean up the edges drill those screw holes prime all the edges and then we'll be in a position where we can fix those in place there's both holes cut prepped primed and I've put the ceiling panel back in place so that I can mark down onto that ply board for where the uh, inner trims are going to meet uh, the outer vents. This is my little jig. So it's just a chippy pencil taped onto a block of wood. The block of wood will follow the cutout and this chippy pencil will mark it down and I can keep that at a right angle as I go around the contour. So. This might be a bit controversial, but because this panel is already trimmed with our cord lining, I'll drill through with a timber drill bit and then I will just cut from this side and it will cut the carpet too. What we'll end up with is quite a bit of um, sawdust on this carpet and on the other side, but I'll hoover it up. Done this many times with sort of altering panels and it's the best way, best way of doing it. The alternative is pulling off all of this cord carpet, cutting it, then re-sticking it. Um, and to be honest with you, it's a pain because you'll pull it off of the glue and then any, any sawdust will stick to the glue and then end up being trapped by the carpet and it's a, it's a, it's a right mess. It's better just to hoover up afterwards and you'll never know um, that there was sawdust on this carpet.
both trims in place and I've got a little bit of wiggle room as well for each of them which means that you know if I'm slightly off once there's vents are in then when we finally come to put them in I can line them up perfectly but obviously I want these to be in line when they go into the van as the um, other ones are give us a, a hoover and then that's that's ready to go back on and we'll seal the vents up So with the sealant on those uh, those vent hatches, I like to put more than is needed on there so that we get sort of a positive squeeze out. And what that means is it's, it's more likely to fill any voids, particularly because it's going onto an uneven surface. Now that isn't the case if you're doing a bonded window because obviously you want to um, land that bonding in the perfect spot so it doesn't squeeze out and then like leave you a really ugly seal. But on the roof, it's, it's a bit different when it comes to hatches. So I like to have it, have it squeeze out and then clean up afterwards. And, and, I, and it's the same with this Dometic um, S4 windows as well. Now the cleanup takes a bit of time. And uh, this is a shout out to uh, my brother-in-law. Um, he worked um, in the workshop with me uh, um, for a good few months uh, during COVID. And um, he, like me, um, it's pretty OCD, but he would, he would fold um, these pieces of blue rock into these perfect little squares. And what, what I like to use is gloves, um, white spirit and um, a silicon, um, a silicon well cleaning cleaning up tool uh, or, or beading tool, and and it's all about just taking your time and removing that sycophlex bit by bit, and then leaving ourselves with a, a, a really clean seal around the outside. And um, so what I do is I fold um, a ton of these squares, and um, what's really handy is you can dip them into the white spirit, and you can use that as a sharp edge to clean up, and then you've got another one and then you can turn it inside out and you've got another clean space so you know with each folded one you've got um, a couple of a uh, couple of sections that you can you can use so yeah fold up I'll probably fold up about 15 of those maybe 20 of those and it's just a case of just cleaning it up chucking that one away cleaning up chucking that one away the thing with the sycophlex is um, when the, the rag or the, or the blue roll is, is um, saturated with white spirit, it will clean the Sikaflex up really easily. But as soon as you've sort of contaminated that with Sikaflex, you'll basically end up just dragging the Sikaflex and it can be an absolute pain in the arse. So take the time. This is a job that, that um, you've got to be really patient on. And I've got to kind of get myself into that mode and, and, um, and leave ourselves with something that, that not only seals, and we can be kind of sure of that, um, but also looks really nice. So if anyone's crawling around on the roof in the future, um, it's uh, it looks 10 out of 10 so yeah we'll do that now so I'll fold these up a stack of those got my cleanup kit we'll do an initial cleanup get rid of most of the sicker flex that's the dirtiest part and then very carefully create a really nice even bead probably thinking isn't that a massive waste of sycophlex in many ways it is but I'd rather use more sycophlex than I needed and, and, and know that these hatches are going to be sealed here for instance you can see that that beads cleaned up really nicely and we've got just remnants of the sycophlex up here and on the steel but it means that I could get right in close to that bead and clean up any remnants you see that's the sort of bead that we want all the way around next up is removing our lovely porthole which I'm a little bit sad about but we're going to replace it with this bonded window that opens first up remove the rubber beading 
take the stainless screws out and then we'll have to break the seal and pull that out and then enlarge the hole for this puppy. Now I'll take the trim off. Well, I've already taken the screws out, but you can see this is the trim that was in place. We've got these two bits of softwood that we bonded to the door. You see where we cut the cross member there, and then there's this ply, ply backer, which I'm gonna get off first, well, attempt to get off first without deforming the steel. That was a real struggle. Um, I tried using glazing wire, but the way that it mated with the steel just meant that I couldn't get it in there without damaging the um, without damaging the steel. Plus, um, the glazing wire is super sketchy because you have to put it under so much tension that if it snaps, um, I'm going to smack inside the van with my hand or something. But what is nice is that it shows you how well fitted they are because it's an absolute pain in the ass to get them back out. That's it all cleaned up nicely. The aperture ready for the window to go in, put the primer on, which helps the uh, bonding adhere to the steel and also covers that cut, cut edge um, to minimize the chance of rusting. How's this for a bit of artwork? <laughs> Guess what's happening here? That's the bonded window fitted and the card on the inside altered. You can see, and then it comes with this magnetic blind, which fits in really nicely. This is thermal, and we're gonna we'll put a trim round here as well. Um, but yeah, I really like that magnetic blind. Comes with the window. Very nearly finished with the amendment work to the Man TGE that we've had in. Um, I'm really happy with how it's all gone. I think it's definitely going to make the, the van a, a more enjoyable experience. Last, or one of the last parts, is uh, fitting the trim pieces to these roof hatches. So what I've done is the actual trim pieces themselves, uh, the roof thickness is, is deeper um, than these plastic trims allow. So all I've done is... I've, um, I've fixed some pieces of plastic, uh, you can see, to the actual trim piece and then, and then I've trimmed them on the inside. So they will slot up and in. I'll show you how it's going to work out. You can see that works really well. Got two wires here because so we're going to add an additional light. The customer's mattress back in place with the bed lowered. That is this vehicle pretty much 
complete uh, or recomplete um, all of the amendments that we had planned um, I've uh, carried out over the last two weeks. It's been really satisfying um, to do all of those, to reconnect with the vehicle, um, spending so much time just in the space, you know, feeling how um, just those subtle changes will make it um, more enjoyable uh, for the for the customer. Very satisfying, and um, yeah, I've enjoyed the process immensely. And um, yeah, thanks for sticking with it. It's been a bit of a behemoth of a video, uh, showing all of the all of the processes. Um, as always, put a comment, um, like, subscribe. I'm really keen to hear your feedback. And uh, yeah, onwards to the uh, the next chapter. <laughs>